Hello everyone, this is Cuddlecore, and I am here with my homie and a great Tekken competitor, Lucky Chloe Specialist, Cooney Specialist as well, Azure Bouquet. How are you doing and thank you for joining me. It's good to be here as always. Uh, happy to talk about anything with the homie here. Um, but no, I'm doing pretty well. Thanks again. I felt like I just had to get you in on this particular topic because I think it's something that competitors struggle with time and time again. Do we go for the top tier or do we go with our heart? Which one do we pick when it's go time? What do we think will get us the dub? What character do we pick? When we're talking about matchups, we're talking about comfortability. I don't think it's like, okay, well, uh, okay, I'm going against Xiao Yu, so this is the character I'm gonna pick because the character's top tier. Well, what if the character might not be specifically good against this particular character? I don't think people think about that sometimes. I think they think, mm. oh, well, I'm gonna pick Geese. I'm gonna pick Akuma because uh, they, they, they crap out damage. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I honestly feel the same way. I think is just the importance of really the, the differences between the characters themselves. The other characters that aren't necessarily this this top row gaming, as we call it, uh, sometimes Ridiculous. it's the characteristics of those of those characters, the, the the things that make them unique. Definitely an important factor in picking a character, not only uh, for matchups, uh, but for you too. <laughs> it's just essentially uh, just really important with that. You know, uh, being both a a Chloe player since you know, the start of Tekken Seven, thinking about the things that she does well and the things she does poorly. Um, having that uh, extra secondary character um, in Cooney really helps with the idea of, of both the change of pace as well as covering the different matchup spreads that Chloe has with uh, certain things like her risk, uh, her range. Um, Cooney really helps with that. You know, you have Chloe, right? Particular character covers a certain amount of matchups. And then you have Cooney. So say if Chloe can't cover certain matchups, Cooney comes in. And that's the beauty of having two characters or three, like the counter picking. And it's not like, you know, even when it comes to damage, that's not like, we're not even focused solely on that, but like mix ups, pacing, like you said, all those things matter so much when we're trying to counter pick in tournament. And sometimes you don't counter pick for the damage, counter pick for a change of pace, um, mix-ups. I think that matters so much. Like, I, I feel the same way, like um, Elisa. Elisa's really good across the board for a lot of matchups. She's considered fundamentally sound, but she's really straightforward. And that means sometimes the pacing can get a little linear, if you will. Sometimes I don't wanna play that way. Sometimes in terms of evasiveness and poking and that fast pace I want really closely with the mix-ups, that's why Xiao Yu exists. I enjoy that, but people will put Xiao Yu lower on the tier list than Elisa. But I found that I've counterpicked by switching to the lower tier character to get the dub because I changed the pacing, the poking was better, and I played a lot closer. Sometimes it's all about approach and changing that up. There's so much more to consider than just the, well, you know, if, are they one of the most well-rounded characters in the game and that's it? No, it, it, there's so much more to consider. And in terms of that too, it's about your comfortability. When you're playing as Elisa, uh, you you kind of have a different frame of mind. It puts you in a different mindset that you know naturally speaking that you you sometimes just you you, you take reins, right? I started out as a really defensive Chloe player, which is pretty ironic for the character because I think a lot of people are really just ready for that Chloe it to party like it's hard. Me unga me bunga. It was it was interesting too to just kind of learn that different play style, but then also eventually come to the conclusion that, hey, you know, sometimes I actually have to play to that character's strengths. Maybe it's time for me to mash all the buttons on my on my pad, you know? <laughs> like, it, so, sometimes we gotta do that. Some of the times I end up using Chloe, uh, despite the fact that she's a lower tier character, you'd be surprised in certain matchups that she really excels at. Chloe versus Spock was just a, like, monster, a nightmare of a matchup. We kind of talked about range earlier, but even beyond that, um, Chloe does a good job at really capturing the button timing of opponents. She has these really good, safe mids. Her damage is like an 18 wheeler with cat ears. It's, it gets rough sometimes. Me playing Shadow, for an example, um, is probably uh, one of the best scenarios I can think of this. Uh, Shadow's an incredible, just amazing player. One of, the, his, one of his really key strengths um, is just the ability to capture the button timing of others. And so I feel like sometimes I'm 
able to sort of thwart that a little bit better by playing Chloe, uh, using her mids, playing that slower pace, despite the fact that she would be the weaker character over Takumi. You know, people would think then like, oh, well, why not Kuni? But well, like you said, it's not always about that. Sometimes it's, a, it's as simple as like, well, Chloe does this really good against this player. And I get a certain response out of this player when I use this character. If that's, since that's successful, I'm going to keep doing that. Speaking again to, to, about Shadow, uh, <laughs> um, we're in grand finals a lot in multiple situations and he will rotate through like maybe three characters. Cause then at that point I'm like, okay, so now you're starting to use a character that's way more mix up heavy. You're playing faster. You're trying to get more damage because you know the way I play with this particular character, like Elisa, I like to come in. I'm gonna try and come in, but what does electric do? Kazuya's electric prevents me from doing that safely because it will clip me. So yeah. I started to use Ling Xiao Yu because the down forward, her down forward one chop literally is a great counter to electric. Mm. A lot of her close range moves crush electrics, oh, including okay. the, the, the very infamous AOP. Like, and when people do these character switches, sometimes it's not just better, but a lot of us are character specialists of more than one character. And I think that's something yes. that people should embrace a lot more to be proud of that. For me, switching to a lower tier, uh, like lo lower tier, like Xiaoyu still means I have the muscle memory and the situational awareness to still pull through. It started out playing Tekken just purely as a Chloe lock. It wasn't until, you know, Kuni really came out in Tekken that I really started to feel like, okay, you know, might be time for another uh, secondary. And uh, I played Kuni in Legacy games. The fact that she was in, you know, saw the trailer, we're in there, right? Just that, that struggle with uh, specific matchup scenarios and just kind of getting comfortable but between characters in terms of, okay. Like the switching, um, right? Yeah, how do yeah. I approach this? You know, I'm used to Chloe just being in your face because, you know, <laughs> Chloe should be in your face. That's what she does really well. <laughs> Learning and discovering the, uh, the the fact that, oh, you know, I have these moves from further ranges, from, you know, your range sevens that suddenly uh, I can I can do. I have sword moves that I can attack across the screen from. This is weird. After playing her consistently for, you know, a year and a half, pretty much now, I it, I, it feels second nature to me. Um, and I think if you're just playing a, you looked at a tier list, your favorite player said that, hey, this character is the bee's knees, 10 out of 10 IGN, um, <laughs> just all of this stuff. It's, it, it takes time to really like learn the, the nuanced things. And do you remember the Tekken World Tour, like 2019 with, uh, Arslan versus, uh, Nimona, or no, oh, excuse me, Arslan versus Naroma. Do you remember that? Yes, because wasn't it? Uh, Geese versus Dragonov. Yes, it was a rage art. So it was a rage art that uh, Naroma just lands on Arslan, and it looks yeah. like this is the perfect situation, perfect scenario. And then does the rage art and just completely phases through him, right? And all it does is one hit, initial hit, one initial hit, and then it's like then a Dragonov crumbles, and then, then nothing else happens after that. But it was so odd. Um, I had, I had never seen anything like that. Was that normal? Does that happen? But also rage art interactions are just very odd, but specifically with geese, that was something I had never seen. And I was curious if maybe he had experienced it before. It's so important that you know your character and know what your character can do and see if your opponent knows what your character can do in these scrambles. Cause that's just as important cause they don't know what's going on. Where shall you? Oh, you know, the moment I'm back turned or you put me in a scramble, say if they do something that's like minus 10, I do one down two. <laughs> I punished you. I'm back turned now. I'm in rage. What do you really? I have like three options and they have to guess because I punished right and I'm back turned. If they guess wrong, they get launched. And I've been in many a scramble. I've been in so many scrambles where that's been the case, where I do a move that puts me in back turn and then they think I'm gonna do something and then I don't. So I think definitely testing that stuff in tournament settings is one of the best ways to to get more familiar with uh, your characters that you specialize in and, and their those situations. Me <laughs> with uh, Qdons actually. Oh, the Lily, right? Yeah. Uh, versus uh, Qdons double gen, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if anyone's seen uh, all of these different matchup spreads and the, the, the infinite possibilities that happens between them, I would say Nii is probably 
the closest human being on the planet who's done he's, that. He's right? a human he's Mokujin. <laughs> he's human Mokujin. He's seen he's seen it all, you know, like so um, you know, low tier Lily versus, you know, Devil Jin, which at the time a lot of people were thinking, you know, DJ's top five at least, you know. In, oh, in we put the, we put him still we, we it was a hard like yes from dang near everybody. He was yeah. He was top tier. One of those exact scenarios where Nii's just really looking for uh, Q-Dance in those situations is just one of the things you're forcing uh, Mishima players uh, to do is attempt, um, you know, your, the electrics, the hell sweeps, all of these things you can sidewalk to the right, or excuse me, sidewalk to the left. And who's really good at that? Definitely Lily. Lily. <laughs> Definitely Lily, you know? Literally just yesterday in the CLG run at Thursdays, you saw Shadow yet again, you know, we're just just, just mentioning Shadow today because <laughs> Sh Shadow's a homie. Picking Lily against uh, Nene. His, Nene's and Kazuya. Oh my God. I was like, no, that's, that, that, yeah, that makes sense to me. If you can stay on a Mishima, it's for, it's gonna force them to have to resort to certain things. And I think some of their moves are a little slower. Some of Lily's uh, pressure tools. So, you know, down forward two, you can bait that. Electric, oh, that's getting baited. Um, mm -hmm. And her hot pick, I think is pretty nice actually. What, what it also does as well is um, it slows the pace down, I think in a way that Mishivas kind of don't want. They want to hit you on the ground and then they want to put you in the vortex and say, what's next, red or black? That character, like Lily, has keep out tools to deal with the electric to and, and movement to deal with that. And if they have a hard time getting an electric, oh, we're prolonging the inevitable. You're going to have to come to me at some point. You're going to have to wave, wave, wave in my face. Not only from a concept of, of matchups, but just, uh, you know, being comfortable with particular situations and knowing those situations from uh, your experience to be able to put yourself in the driver's seat of picking this low tier character that uh, nobody really wants to particular to play based on this list that you found, you know, on Twitter. Uh, sometimes <laughs> a little more than that. Uh, <laughs> and Tekken has a massive roster. I praise it for having that, but I think I've come to this point as a competitor where I'm like, yo, we don't even see these characters half the time. It's not just about who's the best character who can just deal with all this. It, no, it is about like, that's the great thing about that massive roster is that any character can beat any character. Yes, there are situations where it might be tougher, but it, it is it's always it is always doable. Like Rang Chu with Panda. He's a character specialist. Specialist. Like! Most definitely. And he fought, yeah. he, he beat Devil Jin! <laughs> Was it 50 characters that are in Tekken 7? Uh, We're gonna say yeah, probably. Yeah, 50, 51, you know, somewhere in there. It, there it's a lot, right? Um, no matter uh, what your play style is, no matter what you want to do to approach the game, um, there's a character for you with that really big roster size. And I think that that's often overlooked. Picking a character is one of the most important things with playing a fighting game, obviously, right? There's Sometimes people really don't know where to start. With, with the presence of social media, and I think newer, new uh, newer players and stuff they don't know they don't know where to start because everybody's telling them this is what's good this is what's not this is what's this this was i will say that before all of that really you kind of just picked what you kind of liked and it was there nobody was really influencing you truly you kind of just man i like that character that character looked dope pick done i saw our slid switch from geese to zafina or i see more people dropping steve because his down forward two got nerfed uh, he sucks now. Like, but, 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 but what about you? What do you think? Because one move usually should not be the determining factor of you staying with the character or not, in my opinion, because they did that with a couple of moves. So if you're constantly just changing your character based on what somebody says or how um, a patch occurs, your situational awareness might not even always be there because you constantly change and you are not loyal enough to your characters. The sheer amount of moves and approaches you can have with a character, I was able to find out just some really cool stuff and kind of really uh, change my game plan with Cooney in a way that I became a much stronger player, not actually having those tools available to me. As players learn the game, um, one thing that they should maybe ask themselves is, how do you want to play? That's actually really important. Um, 
you know, sometimes people want to be a defensive player. You saw your defensive player, you looked at it and said, hey, this really looks cool. That's actually how I started playing Tekken. Um, Ni was an inspiration for me. Uh, his defense and movement is impeccable. And it was just one thing that I more so uh, just implemented uh, in my play style, just sort of based on watching me. Those characters might not always be the highest characters or those characters that are in the ES Plus role. So I think about like, if you really want to press buttons, uh, Zafina, in some cases, might not be that, that character for you. Actually enjoying the character and the process of learning their ins and outs matters first, because you want to enjoy the process of getting better at the game. If it's just like, well, I'm going to do this and I just want to win, 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 win. Ah, no, 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 no. When you see your evolution from when you first started playing the character and finding all these ways to make them work to your play style and vice versa, it's, it's worth picking a character that truly you can connect to. Find that, that character that uh, really resonates with you. Um, and it doesn't always have to be for a tool set. Uh, it could be for really anything. That's kind of the beauty of, of Tekken in general as well. Some of those characters that are we consider as you know, bottom five, uh, we have character specialists that are doing work with those characters so much in fact that between you know different regions you start to see like the, some some different opinions of characters like that's actually happened in the past as well i think about uh gigas for instance you know there's not a ton of gigas representation here in north america but in japan it's something different oh they go off they go off it was mm -hmm. gigas versus xiaoyu and oh my god the situational awareness was insane um, him and, and I think there's one other Gigas where they they consistently were getting top eight. What I think also what happens is, um, like you said, there's these players that are really pushing that potential of that character. We're talking like they're playing them at the like the highest level at max potential, seeing things that you know when other people play them from other countries as well, by the way, and other regions. They're like, I didn't even know this was possible. I didn't even know that I could, like, that this character could do this. You know, I think about John Ding. John Ding at one point, you know, we knew him as the Eddie, like the Chloe player. Yep. Then I believe some nerfing happened and some characters got added. And so we start seeing John Ding use Julia. And it's not to say that his Julia isn't great because his Julia is really good, but there's a certain type of glow and essence that he has when he plays like a Chloe and Eddie. That is really where I see his personality, his know-how, his situational awareness shine through and just ooze out of him when he plays those characters. So much so that he won a tournament last year. I don't know which one. You can probably help me with that one. It was Rev Major. Like the other people in the top eight, they were using stacked characters. They're stacked. And what did he use? Lucky Chloe, the just, you know, the, the main, my character, love it to death. And the best part about it too, um, had, he had this this matchup, Chloe versus Safina. Like, and that matchup is on paper, and generally speaking, um, it can be very, very rough for Chloe. It's a super rough time. Seeing how, how John Ding really handled that matchup, no matter what, you could tell like his personality really resonates with Chloe, with Eddie. Um, and you're starting to see him use Eddie a whole lot more, even in tournament now. Um, it kind of reminded me of what you said about uh, your, your, your growth with Cooney and, and how like the nerfs that they did do to some of her really strong moves, how it made you think about uh, like your, your approach to using her. With all this discussion about picking a top tier, not picking a top tier, going with what's comfortable for you and what you enjoy, what is something that you would say to people who are really struggling with this right now? I would say find the character or characters that resonate with you. And that that is the beginning of your journey. And that is far more important than anything else. Um, your fun with the game, your experience in terms of what you like and don't like to do. Uh, Tekken 7, this is a game for you. You get to decide those factors, I'd say. Go with the gut, go with your heart. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, go with your gut, go with your heart, pick the character that resonates with you. And on that note, that will call it for our discussion on picking a top tier. Thank you just so much to everybody for tuning in. 
engaging and supporting the community. Uh, let me know what you all think in the comments and we'll see you next time. Bye.